had a couple people request to uh, have a look at how I made the radial collision and how you can use it in a project. Um, just as a quick demo, I use these circle icons because the collision is radial from the center point and using the size of the, the object. So really, circular objects work the best because you can see I can bring it right to the edge and it won't trigger until it gets within that uh, radius. Um, so the way that you can see that it's working is you'll see this, these different if statement boxes. This is kind of why I added it for on collision start, on collision end, and on collision stay. On collision starts, or start happens when the objects first touch each other. <clears throat> and then you'll see on collision stay, on colliding stay, um, happening for every frame until the collision stops. So then it'll go back off. And during those transitions, you'll see that on collision end is called once the frame uh, during the time that it is not colliding anymore, not overlapping anymore. Um, so these are pretty classic in terms of game development. Um, a lot of physics engines will, t will give you these triggers uh, when objects are colliding, when they're starting to collide, when they're still colliding, and when they're ending collision. And then I also have this Boolean value because this, this uh, whole thing might be useful, more useful to you if it just tells you uh, one value of whether they're colliding or not. So I thought that might be useful. Um, the exec in, this is uh, necessary. You need to send an update signal every frame. Um, I could have put this inside of the graph, but I think uh, having it outside lets you do this collision detection before or after something else in your project. Um, so you can order like whether you're detecting the collision after or before you move the objects with some other logic maybe. Um, so that's why that's exposed. Um, and then to use this, notice that I have two images. This is just on a 2D canvas. Now each of these images have some things that you can pin to the graph. There's the position, so click this if you want to add the position of this image down to the, to, down to the visual scripting graph. There's also the scale and then the size. Now the size is the pixel size that it'll appear on the screen and the scale is a value that multiplies by that to change it. So you can actually uh, alter either of these and for the most part they'll, they'll end up being the same. Uh, the, the main difference is if you make one of them a child of, the, of another, then the scale will affect all of the children as well. So just keep that in mind if you're stacking a lot of objects on each other. Um, there is a way to, I think it's pretty popular that people are using their um, face to control an object to kind of collide with other objects to collect them. Um, I'll try to do some sort of um, way that you could do that. So we could make a face sticker. Um, this is how we'll have some face tracking. And, uh, <clears throat> and now I don't want it to change size too much. As you can see, I'm not sure what these numbers will be, <laughs> but let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Um, since there's some pseudo rotation that happens, it's not very easy to tell uh, if the rotations will factor into this. Uh, but yeah, let's just give it a try. So we want to get the position. We want to get the scale. And <clears throat> we want to get the size. And I'm really sorry about how I ordered the inputs. <laughs> uh, you'll just have to match it up by the sub names. Um, so these are the three that go into here. Just replace one of these. And then, <clears throat> and then it'll be colliding with image one, which is the small one up top. So we can see that it stopped colliding and now it's colliding. Stopped colliding, and now it's colliding. So that works very well. Um, I personally don't like the design where it's getting larger and smaller. So if you wanted to, you could add a little extra, um, a little extra logic here. Let's say, um, let's say we're gonna set this one that we replaced 
to actually be the collider and we're gonna just set the position of it. And from this face sticker, we're just going to get the position. And then for our logic here, we'll just, um, oops, we'll just loop this back around ah, so that it's plugging in. And notice this is exactly what I was talking about, where you're going to change the position of something before you check the collision. Because if you're checking the collision after, then it might look wrong if something's moving really fast. Um, so for this face sticker, it's we still want it to use the face sticker parts, but we probably don't want the image to render. And then now we can see this one still follows our face, but it's not doing all the extra pseudo 3D transformations. So it kind of is sort of like a nose catcher, kind of like in, uh, I've seen another user, Jan, do his Pokemon catching game, um, would, would have a similar kind of circle set up like this. Um, so now you can see it's still doing the collision pretty well, pretty exactly. So that's nice. Uh, I think that's a pretty common use case. Um, and of course, you can adjust this, the face sticker to be somewhere else on the face, custom point, left eye, and, and you'll see that the one that follows it now changes as well. Um, I hope this is helpful and I hope, oh, and if you do uh, change that to make sure that it's accurate, you should swap back to the one that's actually following the face sticker. You don't actually want the face sticker to be here anymore. So you can go back and delete those. Um, and yeah, if you have any other questions, let me know. Uh, this is just a quick demo in between all of my other meetings and stuff. So I would love if you guys use this and I can do a more thorough demo in the future if, if uh, there's any interest. Thanks.